Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a quick look at a distro that just uh, was released recently, um, another updated version, that is Void Linux. And somebody sent me a message saying, hey, you should look into this. It looks like a pretty cool distro. And on paper, it honestly does. Um, the problem is I just have not had any ability to get this thing running in any way, shape, or form. And so we are going to ask this question, is Void Linux viable? So, of course, let's go ahead and have a look at their website. Um, like I said, this does look like it's very promising. Uh, VoidLinux.org, and it is not a fork. It is an independent, ground-up Linux distribution, very much like Solace. It's not a Debian-based, it's not an Arch-based, it's just its own Linux distro. They've done a couple of different things. Uh, they have their own system initialization manager uh, called Runit, which is not systemd or sysv, so uh, some people would really be attracted to the fact that it has its own custom means of uh, means of um, running the services. They have their own package manager, XBPS. So this is good if you want to experiment with a new package manager. It's bad if you say, eh, I already know how to use apt, I already know how to use Pac-Man, I already know how to use whatever. Um, so take that for what it is. They also use LibreSSL instead of OpenSSL because of some potential vulnerabilities in OpenSSL. It is a rolling release, um, and so for some people might really love the fact it's rolling, some people may not love the fact that it's rolling, but regardless, you do get a rolling release with it. And um, the other great thing about it is there are a variety of different options as far as your desktop environments, Enlightenment, Cinnamon, uh, LXDE, Mate, XFCE, and you can get some ARM images, uh, so Raspberry Pis, among other things. So there are a lot of uh, are a lot of benefits to this. The downside is it's it's a project that's not really mature enough to to be viable. If you go to their forum page, their forum is down. Um, apparently, their forum was uh, donated um, from somebody and it just came offline and they don't know what's up with it. They do have a wiki which has some basic information, but I found it not to be anything uh, not to be anything useful. For example, our installation guide has nothing except go into the terminal and load up void installer. There is no installer. They could have picked any one of the installers that are out there and ran it, but they didn't. It tells us just go to boot up void installer, and then we just have what looks like just a basic help document from Microsoft. You guys know that old joke, right? So there's a helicopter. Uh, trainee and and he's in there and and the uh, he's running flying the helicopter the the uh, the trainer is in the thing with them they're flying on down Seattle airspace and all of a sudden the cockpit lights everything shorts out and they're like we have no idea where we are it's a foggy Seattle night they see this tall building so they get really close to it and they pen up a little note and they hold it up and says where am I and the people in the room pen up a big thing and they hold up the sign and it says you are in a helicopter and 10 minutes later they were safely on the ground so the the, uh, the trainee says to the the trainer he says I, I, thanks for taking over the controls you got us back to ground but how in the world did you know where we were from that sign he goes oh well i knew that had to be the microsoft building because only computer technicians would give us information that's completely accurate and totally useless and i feel about this about this wiki okay i come in here to try and figure out how to get this installed well at least we have a shell command to install the installer, but it doesn't give us anything else. Particularly of issue is, how do you set up your partition scheme on a completely built from scratch? I use six different partition screens. I tried to run this multiple different times, tried to get this thing installed, I gave up. I even tried running it and then got to the point where it was said it was installed and then it just says grub loading and sat there for 10 minutes and so i was like let's try this let's install ubuntu alongside grub update sees it's there but fails to make an entry for it i could not get into this thing no matter what i don't know why um the wiki I'm finding is just not uh, not as robust as it should be for a ground up Linux distro with no documentation, particularly when the form has died. So here we have the ability to how we add and remove packages. So it looks like it's probably inspired is that Pac-Man, I think. 
um, you know, the SU to install. So it seems like it's inspired based upon that. Um, but anyway, um, what do we get when we actually load this guy up? So let's go ahead and jump on over to see the desktop. Like I said, I um, was not able to get it installed, so we are going to look at the live key. We boot this guy up into Cinnamon. Um, I did pick the Cinnamon desktop, and uh, no, you don't have a black screen. They don't give us a wallpaper. We just have a black screen. If we go into change your desktop environment, uh, what we will actually find is that we do have the uh, Cinnamon uh, desktop uh, wallpapers here to use. Um, so I can load one of these guys up depending on what I'll, we'll do here. Let's just load up. Uh, i got to move my thing around and get that. That's probably because we're in a virtual box. All right, so let's just go ahead and stick with this so we, we at least have something to look at. If you want a minimal install, this is your, your option. Look at this. Accessories. Well, we got Nemo. Uh, Internet. We got Firefox. Administration. Terminal and users and groups. Uh, terminal would be the only application. Users and groups is part of the settings configuration. Preferences. These are all from our settings, system settings, and then we have places. Um, so that is it. So if you're looking for a minimal install, here you have it. Um, we do have, let's see, what is the, do we have our about um, system info here? Let's see what versions of everything we have. Like I said, this is brand new. Uh, it's running Cinnamon version 3.8.8, .8, Linux kernel 4.18. Uh, and so um, that's kind of what, what we're running here. Uh, there's really nothing else to say about it. It's a minimal install. Um, we don't have a graphical installer. We don't have a graphical package manager. Um, so these are kind of things, some people might really want those, some people might not want them. Uh, but regardless, um, I, I tried to get this guy installed. I just, I couldn't get her running, but let's see what happens. So um, let's see, so uh, was it XB? I'm trying to see from, my screen here what what this is so xbps install and let's do let's just do thunderbird see what we get here yeah i should probably run that as uh as root right there we are so yeah like i said very heavily um very heavily um uh influenced by pac-man where we, you don't have to run the update like you do in apt. Uh, some people call that a negative. I think it's a fine thing, um, but uh, it will run itself automatically. So it is, it is in theory, its own ground up package installer, but in reality, uh, it's pretty much like Pac-Man. It's just a different name. So you can query it, you can install pretty much everything the same way. S to install, there's the SU. Um, so everything else is the same. Another downside that I will point out here is that uh, their package repo, I mean, this is this is slow. This is slow as molasses. Um, one of the ways, I, one of the times I got the thing actually running the install, it was going to take hours just to download everything. It is only a 700 megabyte download, but it still took me over a half an hour to grab it because their servers are so slow. That's what we're seeing here. This is just... This is just uh, installing a simple package of Thunderbird, and you know we uh, we still have about a minute left to get this guy installed. Uh, as far as anything else, all we basically have is just a a Linux distro with a modern kernel, a modern desktop environment, but really nothing else to it. So as far as do I consider this a viable distro, I'm just going to have to jump out and say no. I'm not going to consider this a viable distro. Um, in 2018, there's no package, uh, no package installer that, that you can do graphically. I mean, even Arch and Manjaro can come up with things like that. The installers, um, the installation instructions, I don't mind going in and installing something from a, from a terminal. I, I don't mind that in the slightest. Insufficient disk space. Okay, well, apparently, uh, apparently I could not install Thunderbird. I have insufficient disk space. All right, well, whatever. Um, uh, like I was saying, the I, I would like to see some more better installation uh, instructions for a ground-up Linux distro. Uh, maybe it takes some partition scheme that I didn't try, but like I said, I, I tried all the partition schemes that I know of. 
uh, for the VirtualBox setup, everything that has worked on all of the other distros, I simply couldn't get this guy installed on a VirtualBox. And you know, I see a lot of uh, a lot of very negative videos. It's like, oh, you know, oh, another stupid VirtualBox video. Click close it. Yeah, we're gonna install real hardware. Me, 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 me. Guys, if a mich if a thing doesn't work on a VirtualBox, why would I waste my time installing it on something real? Okay, and frankly, yeah, if you got a low-end machine, a VirtualBox is not going to give you a system. I built this computer to test things out on VirtualBoxes. And my experience between a VirtualBox and real hardware is virtually identical. So I don't buy that criticism in the slightest. As far as my take on this though, I really wanted to look at this. I really wanted to see some promise in it. A distro that you have a lot of uh, desktop environments, including in Enlightenment, which a lot of them aren't running these days, um, ARM distros and 64-bit uh, processor distros, all great things. Ground up Linux, I love Solace um, as a ground up Linux distro, but this one here, there's just too many issues. I'm not really going to consider Void Linux a viable option at this point in time. Um, if you're one of the, the maintainers of the project, uh, my apologies for that. But get us some information and documentation about how we can actually get this thing installed and I'll come back and look at it again. As for now, there's way too many Linux distros that work great uh, that I'm not sure we necessarily need another one, particularly one that documentation is so slim and... Uh, none of the other documentation that exists in the Linux world will help us with it. So that's my thought. Uh, I'm not meaning to totally rain on the parade, but at the same time, when I'm fighting with the thing for several hours and can't get it running, I give up. I don't care. <laughs> so uh, that's my thoughts on it. Um, Again, uh, not to bash the system, it's it's great and it's difficult to build a Linux distro for yourself, so I have the greatest of respect. Um, so take this as saying, hey, experienced people can't get this running. Let's fix that first and then see what we can do. Uh, maybe a lot of this information that we needed was on that forum that is down, down now. Maybe that's part of it. Um, but I'd encourage you to go through your wiki, make your wiki useful so that we can get in there and we actually get installation instructions. I mean, yeah, I, uh, the only useful information is to run the package to install it. Um, maybe think about throwing Calamaris or one of the other package managers or package installers on here so that we can uh, install it through the live, uh, live image. That would be a, a useful thing as well. So that's what I have to say about Void Linux. Um, sorry I couldn't do a better video than this, but yeah, that's kind of that's what I came into. So uh, thanks for watching this video, and I hope that you guys enjoy switching to Linux.